Hello, and welcome everyone to another episode of Aging in Action. And we are very excited to welcome our guest, Natalie, here from the Parkside Center of Older Adults. Natalie, you are an assistant manager and the coordinator for Parkside Without Walls. Welcome to Aging in Action. Thanks so much for inviting me, Nikki. No, we are so excited to talk with you today um, about some of the programs the Parkside is offering our community. Um, but before we get started, how about we have you kind of just introduce yourself a little bit and about how you got involved with Parkside? Sure. So I've I've lived in uh, Sudbury uh, in Cape Royal for about seven years, and uh, I was the uh, local manager of the MS Society office here. Uh, lost my job due to COVID, and I was sitting around look, thinking, you know, what am I going to do with myself? I need to do meaningful work, and I have a lot of transferable skills. But uh, this job for Parkside came up, and I applied for it, and uh, it just seemed like it was made for me. It was written for me in mind. That is awesome, and. Um... I'm very familiar with the Parkside and all of the great programs that were offered. I mean, prior to COVID, um, all the community events that you guys did. Um, and I know that COVID's really kind of impacted and kind of forced you guys to change a little bit about how you're doing your programming. Um, and I know loneliness and isolation for anybody in the community, especially, <laughs> especially older adults, um, is a real challenge that we're facing. Um, and I know you have a whole array of programs because I was reading your newsletter that you sent off to me and it's like a novel of amazing things that you guys are offering. Um, so can you talk a little bit about one of the, the programs you do, the Without Walls program? Can you just tell our audience what that program is? What, what does it look like? So basically, the Without Walls program means that we're breaking down barriers for people to access uh, programs. So there are no barriers. As where when we were open, it's within our four walls of our building. And the Without Walls spans all throughout Northeastern Ontario. Uh, so for instance, I have someone that heard about us on CBC Radio. She lives in Edmonton. Her mother's in long-term care in Timmins, and she participates in our Coffee Talk program. So she doesn't have access to technology, but I do a coffee talk program three times a week. I know we're going to talk about that later, but uh, virtual programs like Zoom are so fantastic to connect people. And when we were forced to close our building down, it really impacted our membership and the downtown community as well, because a lot of people showed up just for the Friday lunch and learns where they had soup and sandwich and live entertainment and came to enjoy our kitchen and cafeteria and that kind of thing. So the Without Walls program was designed so that even though we are shut down, that we could still connect. The second best way is virtually like we are now online and try to curb that sense of isolation and disconnect that people were feeling. Mm -hmm. And I know the socialization is a huge piece um, to all of our wellness and well-being um, that you had mentioned. So that's, that's, and I've heard a lot about this Without Walls program across the community um, of different talks and information that they have. Now, I know you kind of threw coffee talk yeah. in there. Um, and I'd like to know a little, and I know Joy's nodding her head here. I'd like to know, know what, what is yeah. coffee what talk? Is it? So coffee talk, we do it three times a week at 11 o'clock in the morning. And some people are, you know, they find, um, 1-800 numbers and passcodes and all these things so cumbersome and, and, and just, you know, gives them stress sometimes. So my coffee talk program is a call out program. I will do an intake with someone uh, if they're feeling isolated or lonely or just want to mm -hmm. chat and be, be part of a group and I call them. So the phone will ring at 11 o'clock in the morning and it's me. And you pick up the phone, you say your name, you press the pound key and that's all you have to do. You're connected to the, to the group. And no one knows one another. We've got a bunch of people that it's on typically about nine or 10 on the call and it lasts about an hour. And I come up with different topics for discussion. It's not meant as a counseling session. It's more of a connecting session and it's like our own little community. So I might have topics like, um, you know, tell us something funny that your pet did or when I grow up. So we would talk about when you were little, what did you want to become when you grew up and did you end up doing that? And if not, why not? You know, um, gadgets that have 
you know, in technology that have, have come about over the years that we could never live without today, but you didn't have it 60, 70 years ago. We talk about all those types of things. What makes us happy every Thursday is gratitude circle. So we find something that we're just very thankful and grateful for. And, you know, we share perspectives from our life and they find it so valuable because sometimes someone will come up with a topic or an answer to a question and then it'll spark a memory that they hadn't thought of. So it creates a whole new conversation. And I feel like it's, it's such a connecting program for many of them. It's the only phone, only time their phone rings in a day. So it's really been like a life-saving type of program for them. And everyone's very welcoming of one another. Um, we're starting to learn each other's voices and, um, yeah, it's very, it's respectful and it's fun. We laugh a lot. We try to, you know, I try to, as the moderator, try to crack some jokes with some people and it makes people feel a little bit more at ease. Some people are real talkers. Some of them are a little bit more timid and I can see on my computer screen who's on the call. We do roll call and um, yeah, I just, I'll say if I haven't heard from a certain person in the call, I might say, well, what do you think about that? Mm -hmm kind of puts them on the spot, but it also gives them confidence to know that they can speak up without speaking over one another person. But overall, it's a really fun, fun program. And I really feel um, so connected to them. And I know it means such a, a difference to them. Natalie. I think that's awesome. Yeah, like really that we're not using the technology that's out there, especially when so many of us um, don't have that tech the laptops, the phones, the, you know, the opportunities to go zoom. I love that. It's kind of, I'll call it the old school, but that we're going back to that, that yeah. phone phase. I love it. I just love it. Natalie, how do you get uh, a list of people that might want that? Like where, who's giving you that name to call that person? Sometimes I get referrals from other agencies. So I've been doing a lot of uh, networking with other agencies that serve the adult, the older adult population. Oh. And um, so people are hearing our commercials on the news. They're hearing, you know, programs like this that, that we're doing right now uh, through referrals. And it might be a friend or a family member that's hearing the commercial driving in their car. And they say, oh, you know what? That'd be great for my mom or my elderly neighbor that just lost her husband. Or like, that's really how it's been kind of taking off. And, um, but people can call me as well. And then um, we send out, I think there's about 1800 emails to all of our membership base and extended groups and that kind of thing in the community. So as more people. Oh, I lost your connection. Talk, there's two pages devoted in our newsletter towards that. It's like, what exactly is that? How easy is it to, to click? What do I need to connect? Just a normal telephone, you know? Um, and then, so the process would be, if you wanted to refer someone, they would call me. I'm going to tell them all about the program, get them excited about it and get them comfortable with it. And then I add their telephone number to my uh, Mercury program. And then they automatically get a call. Now, some people will say to me, well, what if I'm not really feeling well? Or what if, you know, my daughter takes me every Wednesday in the morning to do groceries, I'm going to miss the call or, you know what, don't answer the phone call. If you yeah. want to hang up, yeah. it's okay, because yeah. the program for them, right? And so they yeah. feel like a sense of like, oh, no, what if, you know, what if I just don't really feel like talking today? That's okay. Mm -hmm. You know, and so I just I, I make them feel comfortable about um, having those options. And if at any point they don't want to anymore, they find that the phone is, you know, they, they don't want to participate. There's no harm. I just remove them. And if they decide later on, you know what, I've had a little bit of a break. I want to join back in. I add them back into the program. As simple as that. So Natalie, is, is there um, um, a price for this or no, everything is free. So that's the other thing with without walls, the majority, I would say like 90% of our programs are all free. There are some programs that we have to pay an external um, facilitator, but it's probably because their programs were already running when we were open. So something similar, uh, a program like chair yoga or gentle Hatha yoga, um, Programs like that, the line dancing has a minimal fee, but that's that's completely to uh, the instructor. The programs that myself and my coworker Pete do, because he does a lot of the computer type of training. So, you know, um, 
if they want to join computers and then it's like, oh, okay, well, my son bought me an iPad or, or a, a, a tablet. I don't really know how to use it. Uh, download the app for Zoom. I will do that over the phone. I'm going to pay attention. I'm going to ask you step by step, what do you see on your screen? And I'm going to help you download it. And we're going to do a mock little Zoom class, just me and you to get used to it. And I'll send you your links. And, you know, it just, it's just about building confidence with people. I have people who are 87 years old and they're joining our chair yoga program or, you know, they're, they're, they're doing our, our walk program. I may need you to help me with my uh, Zoom difficulties now. <laughs> I run into those on a regular basis. <laughs> so call you up, show you my screen. I think we're all learning at the as we go with it. Honestly, mm -hmm. it was new technology for me as well. So I always make sure to commend them and saying, "Good for you for showing up, for okay. taking that extra step to learn." And for myself, I, I like Android stuff. I'm not an Apple person at all. So it's yeah. really been a challenge for me to learn about MacBooks and iPads and kind of teach them. But, you know, we're both working through it together, myself and the client. And it's just all about connection and listening and um, trying to help one another. They're so, they're so impressed. When they finally get onto Zoom and they see me, they're like, hey, yeah. there, here you are. Yeah. I'm there. It worked. Oh. And they're just so like, some of them are so almost emotional, you know, yeah. um, just, I can't believe that I'm doing this same thing. We have the Parkinson's group that has a kinesiologist that does Parkinson exercise. So anyone that has Parkinson's disease can connect with them. And then it connects them to the broader group for the support group. So they don't feel alone and they're all doing exercises in their home. Some of them still need me to send their link 10 minutes before the class starts and watch and, and, and step-by-step yeah. -step guide them in but repetitive over the months that subsided because they're remembering and it's getting easier. So I love that evolution of learning. Well, that's, well, that's almost like having a visitor. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, I'm seeing you here right now. And it's like, you're here, right? Yeah. Yeah. Even though you're not really here. So I think that. No, I, I agree. It's I great think, for the seniors and the kids. It's yeah. almost like having somebody that day. Yeah, for sure. I think Zoom has allowed us to, because when you think about it, years and years ago, we didn't have that capability, right? And it's, uh, I think it's a wonderful tool. I do still miss being with people, but how would we, five people have been able to connect and, you know, and add many more people to the, to the call too. It would be very difficult to get us all in the same place at the same time. Right? So that's great. So now, now, go ahead, Nikki. No, it's okay. Go ahead, Joy. I was just going to ask, I know you mentioned, um, you know, with COVID things have changed. So how does one today get involved in support Parkside if they're interested or they're another, another organization or individual that maybe has a program? It's not like we can just walk in today and say, hey, you know, can we volunteer or do this? Is there any structure right now or anything we can do to share? Absolutely. So, you know, we've got a lot of different programs. And if you've had the opportunity to check out our newsletter, you'll see the vast variety of programs. That's just a few, like the three of us kind of putting our heads together saying, what kind, what do we need? You know, we're in the midst of surveying all of our uh, members to say, what, okay, what's next? What kind of programs do you guys want? And we'll try to make it happen. As for networking the community, I'm always looking for guest speakers. I know through Home Instead Seniors, Nikki's gonna be starting a series for Seniors Month in June to talk about four different types of sessions that are relatable topics to seniors. And that's awesome. Um, I have a retired psychologist that has offered to uh, conduct a stress management series series of three series that's starting in a couple of weeks. And, you know, as much as it's geared to people who are 50 and over, if you're a caregiver or you're working with older adults, you're able to join that as well. So I'm going to try to market that specific session to get the numbers up for people to participate. Cause I think it's really beneficial, especially right now. He's also offering a weight management course and he's also offering uh, 10 weeks. I think we're on number five, starting tomorrow of travel logs where he and his wife traveled across the world on their sailboat. And he's sharing all of his photos and taking us through all of their five senses almost of what he experienced on that trip. So that's just one person providing three different types of programs. I have another lady who volunteers at the Caruso club. That's going to be teaching how to make risotto and meatballs in June uh, live from her kitchen. Oh, wow. I, um, yeah. So, you know, I have another lady who teaches belly dancing, who knows how to make bows 
and wreaths. So <laughs> she's going to be doing um, a session on how to make some pretty bows and wreaths. So, you know, it just, the, the sky's the limit, really. I have another lady who is a retired occupational therapist who did some sessions for taking care of your back, your shoulders, your neck, all of these things. She's also a painter and she's going to be doing some, uh, you know, painting kind of classes. We want to try and do some intergenerational type of, of, um, programs as well. So, you know, we have um, the aging and action group that have retired professionals that are going to be speaking about different topics that they're passionate about. Um, Mary so I can't remember her, how to say her last name, but anyway, she's a wonderful woman. She's a, a very much a leader in Sudbury. She just spoke about empowerment and aging. So the topics are, are really unlimited they're without walls too. So anything that you think is relevant to seniors, uh, whether it's their health, uh, mental health, physical health, um, just, you know, the horticultural society does um, sessions for us about gardening and, and those are really well attended. So anything really, um, anyone can share their expertise with us through Zoom. That's the best part. So I guess the better question is, is there anything you can't teach and you can't do? I mean, you've kind of hit all of the parts of aging in action and aging in place when it comes to sharing resources on the Zoom platform that you're talking about. One of the other things I kind of want to touch on, I see a lot of activity um, on your Facebook. Um, I see you guys going live a lot of times. I see a lot of kind of attention going towards those uh, pages. So is that a good spot for a family caregiver or an older adult to be able to go to kind of see what you guys are doing? I mean, what are you exactly sharing on your Facebook page? Exactly. Yeah. So, you know, social media is great. I think for our demographic, Facebook is still the go-to social media of choice. And, you know, as a program coordinator, as an assisted manager, uh, assistant manager, we're trying to just kind of, I'm trying to figure out how do I engage people more? How am I getting my numbers up? I have to reevaluate all the time. Uh, you know, I worked in special events and nonprofit and in government for many years. You have to reevaluate what your success is. Is it really just money raised? If it's a fundraising initiative, is it about numbers of population of people participating? And it depends on the on the time of day. It depends on the time of the week, the day of the week. It depends on the topic and how relevant it is to people, how much I'm sending out reminders to people like, hey, you've registered, are you showing up? I'm really just my strategy with um, going live from Facebook is like, if I had a really small amount of people or maybe even zero registrants for a certain program, I'm gonna go live now because it's gonna ping whoever's following our page and they're gonna say, oh, Parkside's live, what's going on? And even if they've engaged for only a couple of minutes, they might go back when they've got time later to re-watch it. And I feel like all of our content is very valuable. And especially if the people who are going to come as presenters are going to put in their time, I want to have that reach as, as broad as I can. So, and it's there forever. So uh, I have been doing that. I noticed that our engagement numbers um, are, are really skyrocketed since I started doing that. And it's better to do it that way. I felt than just canceling a program and, um, uh, you know, I, I know that it's it's really taking off and we're seeing more referrals coming in for different types of programs or at least inquiring. I've got people from the Lynn social workers at the hospital and people who are just kind of, you know, connected through either Sherry Moroso or the CARP, uh, you know, retirement professionals and people are sharing this. So I'm just trying to get the newsletters out. I've revamped the way it's looked. Uh, I get a lot of feedback about how bright and relevant and easy to read it is and uh, that's good for me because it's a labor of love <laughs> and I'm here just to make sure that I'm connecting people so whatever kind of tools make sense to connect people and get those numbers up that's good for me. Nikki maybe you can go on you can teach us how to do TikTok properly. <laughs> <laughs> do a TikTok with Nan oh my Parkside. Oh, geez. <laughs> Parkside. TikTok with Parkside. Yeah. I mean it sounds like and I, I was like I mentioned earlier in the episode I was going through your newsletter and I was very impressed with all the great programs you guys Ooh. offer and all the different topics and the different ideas that they're going to interest people out in the community. I mean there was tons I was seeing especially the travel one I was like oh my gosh this is really unique and cool. Um, and with all of these programs that you guys are running, I mean, are you guys in a capacity to look for volunteers? Are you looking for community support? 
support? I mean, if so, what does that look like? So in terms of volunteers, it's more just about someone who feels comfortable to share their expertise or their passion. Um, some of you might know Hugh Cruzel, for instance, he has a podcast and he does uh, food critiquing and that kind of thing. Uh, he and I, he, he actually interviewed me for his podcast and in turn learning about our programs, he was like, you know, I really love wines and all this stuff. I said, well, you know, would you maybe want to do a tutorial on wine tasting? And he said, that would be fantastic. So we made it happen around Valentine's day and he provided five different wines and where to buy them and how much they were to let people know this is, you know, and he did a two and a half hour wine tasting on zoom with our people and it was a real hit right so that's how people can get involved um the broader community will you'll notice in our newsletter we do have some opportunity for advertising um you know it's very very affordable it basically just covers the cost of printing it and sending it out to the folks that don't have internet that we can't send out uh, by email right now but you know we have pretty much close to 2000 people that you're reaching that are the, of, of our, of our demographics, um, you know, which could maybe just cost you $25 and $50, a hundred dollars a month, you know, very, very, very affordable. And especially with more people that age as that target group of what you want to do. So, you know, we're always looking for new opportunities for new advertisers. We've had some advertisers that were kind of, you know, forgetting about us. And now that they've seen the new format, they've jumped back on board as a monthly subscriber and just really liking the new format and how clear it is. And, you know, that it makes you feel good that your logo and that your business is, is being um, put out into the world as a professional document that people are going to really read and receive well. So that's my that's what my focus is to, to help the advertisers as well. Not just helping us with, you know, it's not expensive, but your reach is really, is really going to get the people that you're trying to target and more people are paying attention to Parkside Center. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, I, for sure, Natalie, uh, if I have a minute here. Uh, um, so once COVID is over, if, if there's such a thing, is this something that you feel in the Parkside feels that this is just a whole new way uh, of doing, you know, programs and, and something that you plan on continuing? We absolutely do. And we've already uh, targeted that and those challenges. We have the technology in place now through a grant to ensure that once we do reopen and we're in a position to do that, to do that safely, that we're going to integrate the in-person programs with Zoom as well. Because let's face it, I think that there was a lot of older adults that were homebound, regardless of, you know, if it was a health issue or otherwise that just weren't able to get to the downtown. There's a lot of challenges to that as well with parking and weather. And the, you know, when we were open, we had to sometimes cancel programs at the last minute because of the weather with zoom and this te new technology, we really don't have to worry about it anymore. Those who feel comfortable to come down in person can do that. And those who, for whatever reason, like I say, if it's mobility or other reasons, they don't have to worry. They can still feel like they're part of it. So imagine uh, having our live entertainment, our soup and sandwich lunch, and having that live on stage and you can't quite make it for whatever reason. We're going to zoom you in so that you can see the crowd and you can see the entertainers and still feel like you're part of the Parkside Center when we reopen. So we're really proud and we're excited about integrating both of these platforms when we reopen that's awesome like you've opened doors for a lot of seniors that otherwise yeah. couldn't participate right so it's absolutely and i had a micro grant uh, for 20 weeks we had live entertainment on thursday evenings and we had a program called the wembley program and i believe it was through the clarion hotel it's an overflow uh, uh portal for people who are being um uh, they're just leaving the hospital and they're still in transition um, for supports and they would participate as a group of patients uh, and watch these concerts on zoom on Thursday nights. So, you know, we have the ability because of technology to connect to these retirement homes and these facilitators um, from, and the activity directors from those homes can connect with me to try and make these programs a little bit more available on top of what their programming is as well. Wonderful. Yeah. That is Great. fantastic. And I'm keeping an eye on the time um, <laughs> as we're going so through. Fast. <laughs> and we are coming up to a close. I Yes, Natalie, I did tell you this would go fast. Um, is there any final thoughts uh, that you want to share with our audience 
Um, before we do close up the episode, keeping in mind, we will be sharing uh, the Parkside Center uh, website, your Facebook page, and your contact information, Natalie, for people to reach out if they're interested in hosting a Zoom session, if they're a family caregiver, an oral, an older, sorry, or an older adult that wants to join one of these amazing programs. Um, but I wanted to give that opportunity if there's anything you'd like to kind of say to our viewers. Yeah, I mean, really, it's for people who are ages 50 and up of any abilities and their caregivers and their family members as well, you know, um, just connect with me and we'll get you guys all connected and, and it's really easy. I think that's the best, the best part is that it's so easy. Some people are just overwhelmed about it. I look at the May newsletter, there's travel logs, there's a cooking class with me twice a month. You're going to learn a new recipe. We're going to do it together on zoom. We have the walk 25 program for seniors where you're going to do a walking program with me. I do it with you. So I'm getting the benefits of it too. And it's so much fun and new this month. We've got cribbage. Cribbage online in Zoom in breakout rooms online virtually. So oh, can wow. you imagine? Yeah, we're we're my, figuring it out. We're figuring it out, and we're connecting people. Wow, my dad would have loved that. <laughs> I play crib every Friday night. Oh wow! Well, there yeah. you go. Um, now I'm hungry and I want wine, <laughs> uh, but I can't have either of those. Um, we just want to thank you so much, Natalie, uh, to you and your team at the Parkside Center for Older Adults for joining us here on this call, sharing your amazing programs um, and what you guys offer our community and helping us um, age in action. Thank you. Thank you so much. I appreciate Thank it. Thanks, Thank you, Natalie. Natalie.